It took a while, but Square Enix has finally released the new trailer showing off not only Kingdom Hearts 3, but Kingdom Hearts 2.8, Final Chapter Prologue. And it's here that we've gotten quite a few new details, not only on the combat, but a better look at the new Heartless and abilities as well. So it's time to summon the old analysis machine to see what secrets and hidden details we can find in this Jump Festa trailer. But be sure to watch our previous Kingdom Hearts analysis, as we'll only be covering the new stuff here. Before we get into Kingdom Hearts 3 proper though, let's take a quick look at the new scenes from Kingdom Hearts 2.8. The first scene we see is a familiar one, with Yen Sid giving information to Riku, Kairi, and Mickey, which makes this shortly after the ending scene in Dream Drop Distance. Yen Sid is mostly setting up the plot for Kingdom Hearts 3, where the 13 beings of darkness and the 7 beings of light will clash. But they are at a disadvantage since Terra, Ventus, and Aqua have disappeared for 10 years. The three of them must be found, but Mickey has some information that we've never known before. He actually met Aqua while in the Realm of Darkness. And while we don't see any gameplay, Mickey's story will likely serve as the framing device for how he met Aqua. What's strange is that this makes us assume that a fragmentary passage will cover the time Aqua wanders the Realm of Darkness at the end of Birth by Sleep until meeting Ansem the Wise after the events of Kingdom Hearts 2. It's a 10 year time span that's quickly covered in Birth by Sleep's secret ending. And it could make sense that Mickey ran into Aqua while searching for the Realm of Darkness's Keyblade, the Kingdom Key D, during the original Kingdom Hearts. But according to an interview with Silicon Era, Tetsuya Nomura revealed that this takes place after that secret ending. So what could possibly happen to Aqua while she's waiting on that beach with Ansem, and when would Mickey have met her there? But that's all we see of a fragmentary passage, and instead the trailer moves on to Kingdom Hearts Key, back cover, which I'll refer to as Chi to avoid confusion. Like previous Kingdom Hearts collections, this one will contain enhanced cutscenes. In this case, it's a retelling of the events from the browser game Kingdom Hearts Chi, which was released as a mobile title called Unchained Chi, and is the version that the rest of the world will eventually get. We don't see any of these cutscenes during the trailer, instead it focuses on an unknown room inside what is likely a clock tower. This is probably the same one that can be seen in Chi's main hub, Daybreak Town. As we stated in the previous analysis, Chi is the first game chronologically in the series and takes place during the legendary Keyblade War. During it, a Keyblade Master bestows five of his six apprentices with a book of prophecies that could see the future. Upon seeing the results of the Keyblade War, the apprentices created five unions in order to train new Keyblade wielders against the darkness. These apprentices became known as the Foretellers. Thanks to Kingdom Hearts Chi back cover, each Foreteller now has a voice and we hear them all during the trailer. The first is Foreteller Unicornus and his Unicornus Union. The Angui Union and Foreteller Angui who is a young woman. The Ursus Union and Foreteller Ursus the Volpeus Union and its young female foreteller Ava, and finally the Lepidos Union and foreteller Lepidos. What I'm trying to say is that the foretellers have really original names for their unions. Yet despite the fact that each one holds a copy of the Book of Prophecies, it seems that the exact same page is missing from each one. This in turn disrupts their ability to avert the outcome of the Keyblade War, which may mean that a traitor is among them. Obviously, the Foretellers fail to avert this crisis and the world becomes enveloped in darkness, with the one world splitting up into many like in the other Kingdom Hearts games. While we don't know for sure until the game comes out, it looks like the mere presence of this traitor is what divides the unions and fosters distrust as one of them states that they should only trust themselves. It's pretty obvious that all of these events tie into Kingdom Hearts 3 in some way, yet the portion of the trailer that shows 3 is all gameplay. While it begins with some familiar scenes in the Tangled World, it soon expands into an extended fight against the Dandelion Heartless. What's odd though is that all throughout this fight, Sora is using the arrow spell at the end of his combos, yet we never see a quick command menu appear like in previous games. It makes us wonder if the spell system is being changed in some way to allow Sora to use magic during his normal attacks since not every combo ends in a spell. However, at one point we do see the shortcut menu where the available options are listed as Fire, Cure, Arrow, and Blizzard. However, they don't seem to be mapped to a face button and there are arrows and empty circles indicating that this shortcut list has even more to it. 
It all just begs the question of whether this can be even counted as a shortcut if it still has to be navigated. But in addition to arrow, we see fire being used, which has some fun effects. For one, it's much larger than the previous fireball Sora has shot out, and it arcs upward to hit the nearby enemy. And it has an impressive graphical effect where it leaves an ember trail on the ground below. This can even be seen during Donald's fire magic in the Tangled World, where the ember trail doesn't appear in the water, only the grass, which is a great detail. But magic seems to have one more new ability in that it can actively disrupt a Heartless or even change how it looks. In the Tangled World, Sora uses Arrow against the Dandelion Heartless, which knocks away almost all of its fluff, leaving a solitary strand. Is this just for humorous effect, or does it weaken its defenses or limits its attack in some way? And could this mean that other Heartless can now be affected cosmetically? At the very least, we see that Arrow can be used to knock the yellow opera-like enemy out of the sky at Yen Sid's tower. It should allow for experimentation to see what spells work best against certain enemies. Magic's role seems greatly enhanced. And speaking of the Heartless, we see three new ones in this trailer. The first is in the Tangled World behind Rapunzel's tower. Here we see a Dryad, or at least a plant-like Heartless. Strangely, they never actually attack, instead choosing to spread their petals all around. We never see how this affects Sora, but he never attacks back. It could be that if he does attack, they will counter him viciously. Of course, it could also simply be that the trailer wanted to show off the effect of having all of these petals on screen at once, which is quite striking. When the trailer switches over to Twilight Town, two new Heartless have been added to this familiar fight. One is the aforementioned Yellow Opera, though we suspect it's actually a new version of something from that Heartless family. When it attacks, four kunai-shaped objects emerge from its body and begin charging electricity. So at the very least, this Heartless fills the role of the Yellow Opera. Rather than send out a bolt of lightning, it actually swings these kunai at Sora while he defends, the force of which sends him sliding back. As he runs by, we can clearly see that the kunai are connected by a series of rings which match it well with the other new Heartless. And later in the trailer during the fight at Yen Sid's, we can see that it swings the kunai in a large circular arc around itself, which could make it tricky to approach. The other one is a little harder to place, but it appears to be a smaller, differently colored version of the Crimson Jazz, though the design on its body is similar. Like the other Heartless, a ring of symbols appears behind it as it prepares to attack. The design and energy is all fire-based, so it's likely this game's replacement for the Red Nocturnes from the original. While we don't see it attack, we can assume that it will shoot these fireballs at Sora at some point. What's interesting is that the design of these ring symbols is reminiscent of the Japanese deities Fujin and Raijin, which is likely intentional as they stand out from previous versions of these Heartless. Finally, we see that large bodies will once again create shockwaves, though they seem to be much more conical this time around. It could be that the area of effect has been increased so that Sora can't escape simply by jumping. These combat scenes also give us a much better look at Sora's animations. For one, after performing a dodge roll, it seems he's able to jump in mid-air during the middle of combat. It may be that he's using the Heartless as a springboard, but it doesn't seem to be affected at all. It's a strange moment that might either be a part of the game or just a weird hiccup in the animations. At the very least, we see that Sora has an aerial finishing move that brings down his Keyblade hard. More impressive is how, rather than simply phasing through each other, Sora automatically moves out of Goofy's way, smoothly gliding around him during combat and even glancing back toward Goofy as he runs past. It's a nice touch to once again show a surprising amount of realism in a game about key swords and Disney characters. Another example of this is during the Hercules world when Sora lands in the river. The rushing water begins carrying him down river, showing that it's not just static imagery. Presumably, he can jump out of it at any time, but stays in for the purpose of the trailer. But several interesting things happen during this sequence. The first is that Sora passes by an unopened chest at one point, and the second is the behavior of the Heartless. They break into two different factions with half giving chase to Sora as he flows away, while the other half stays behind to fight Donald and Goofy. It helps underline the fact that the Heartless will be somewhat smarter this time around. We mentioned before how Sora runs into some Dryad-like Heartless on the other side of Rapunzel's tower, but there are other mysteries as well. For one, his command menu is now orange instead of the typical blue. 
At first, we thought this might be because he's locked onto an enemy, and the new color acted as an extra indicator. Yet during the Hercules World segment, the command menu is still orange despite not being locked onto anything. And this isn't a cosmetic choice made by the player either, since during the fight at Yen Sid's tower, we see the menu change from blue to orange. Now this does happen when Sora summons his Keyblade, but obviously it didn't do this during the fight against the Dandelion Heartless. So what exactly is causing this change? What does it indicate for the player? We just don't really know. When facing off against the Dryad looking Heartless, we see that Sora will have access to the Aerial Dodge once again, which puts him high above. But like we said, he never actually attacks, instead dodging around and jumping off a wall to activate his new Flow Motion ability. And this continues when Sora uses a new version of the Shot Lock system from Birth by Sleep, except thanks to a menu that appears, it looks like there are two options, Shot Lock Flow and Athletic Flow. We believe that this scene demonstrates the Athletic Flow as he dashes from Heartless to Heartless, but doesn't seem to really hurt that many of them. However, the option to attack does appear before he reaches each one, so it seems to be a purely player choice. Another thing to note is that his focus meter only drops when activating the ability and not when doing all the swinging around, which looks remarkably similar to how he swung around objects in Dream Drop Distance. It's not until the end of the trailer that we see the Shot Lock Flow ability. This time he sends out an attack from his Keyblade that hits all enemies that he's locked onto, just like how it worked in Birth by Sleep. It seems pretty basic at first, except that something else is quite different. After using Shot Lock Flow, the yellow bar says EX instead of Max, yet after Athletic Flow, the yellow bar says Focus. Could each of these flows tie into other abilities? For example, Athletic Flow activates Focus, which could tie into motion-based abilities and attacks, while Shot Lock Flow ties into potentially enhanced attacks and abilities. It's not clear at all, and EX even appears when Sora was fighting against the Dandelion Heartless. Could this really mean something, or have the developers just not chosen whether to label it as EX or Focus? At any rate, we see one final special move from Sora, a brand new Attraction Flow. There appears to be a quick select for it as well, though again we see no menu appear. Instead, a bar appears for just a few frames, which seems to indicate that this attraction will only last for 99 units of time. Presumably it's seconds, but 99 seems like a really long time for something like this, so it could be shorter. As the sequence plays out, a new command menu appears with the options to shoot, cancel, and perform something we roughly translated as Ghost Jump. The attraction itself looks to be based on Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin in Disney World, but there might be a slight reference to a related ride in Disneyland, Toy Story Midway Mania. We say this because Sora puts on glasses when getting in the ride, switching to a first-person perspective. 3D glasses are used on Midway Mania, but not Space Ranger Spin, which makes us believe it's more of an amalgamation. Like the other attraction flows that we've seen, Sora, Donald, and Goofy all board the ride and shoot together, earning points for each hit. Their shots are also distinctive with Sora's being red as it's the most common, Donald's presumably blue, and Goofy's green. In addition, there's a high score meter at the top left of the screen, which likely means it will have to be beaten in order to fill Jiminy's journal just like in past games. More points can be earned from shots that launch Heartless into the air where the word chance appears. Hitting them multiple times in the air gives a greater opportunity for more points, so juggling is where the most points can be earned. At the end, Sora, Donald, and Goofy charge their blast together to create a massive explosion that hits all enemies and gives a lot of points. Could this somehow be the ghost jump referred to in the command menu? At the very least, it might be similar to how summons can be used for one big attack at any time in previous games, but it immediately uses up their available time. The last thing of note is during a combo that Sora performs at Yen Sid's tower. We see the lettering 1P and 2P quickly appear above the Heartless. These are likely the experience points being earned, though it must be Donald and Goofy actually destroying them in this moment. Strangely, there's no sign of destroyed Heartless during this sequence, so could these be referring to something else? We honestly doubt it, though the fact that these numbers are so low does indicate that Yen Sid's tower is very early in the game. Though it's still unknown exactly when Kingdom Hearts 3 will be released, the battle system in place looks extremely fun. It's both expanding on previous systems, bringing others back, and introducing brand new ones, all of which seem to be labeled under a Flow moniker. This is likely the big new addition to the gameplay outside of the ability to transform Keyblades into special weapons. 
Combat is going to see a lot of variety and we can't wait until we get even more information. But until then, let us know if we missed anything in the comments. If you liked this video, be sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Game Explained to keep up with everything we do. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned to Game Explained for more on Kingdom Hearts and other things gaming.